Hi everyone, I'm Olga and this is Prime Link. Hi everyone, it's Jana and today we would like to talk about a very important uh, uh, issue for all language learners. Uh, it's fluency. We want to talk about what fluent, what we think fluency is, and um, well, and different different things connected with it. So, Olga, can you tell us what you think fluency is? Right. So I think uh, nowadays it's a, a pretty uh, uh, relevant question, and uh, many people discuss it and have opinions about it. Uh, so of course, I, as a passionate language learner, have my own, and I'm going to share it with you. And I kind of suppose that it might not be very popular with many language learners, and um, maybe Jana included. <laughs> uh, but the thing is that I am a perfectionist, and uh, in uh, my opinion fluency a real fluency and um, something we should reach if we say that we know this language is uh, um, this perfection when you are really close to uh, the level of the natives of course uh, you will probably um, never or very seldom reach this uh, level of the natives but uh, at least you should try to get as close to it as possible so um, what i mean is um, there comes a point when we really understand we start understanding a language um, pretty well and we can watch uh, movies and understand uh, i don't know 100 percent uh, 90 percent of what we hear and uh, of course we can uh, express our thoughts we can speak pretty <clears throat> easily without any um, significant difficulties but uh, in my opinion that's not enough so uh, real fluency uh, is when you really understand the, the subtle differences between words you know all the scope of grammar so yes maybe if uh, you are not a language tutor, you don't necessarily have to be able to explain it very well, but at least you've covered it and uh, you can use it, you can uh, um, kind of feel it when you come across it. So uh, another thing is uh, writing. You must definitely be able to write freely and uh, not just correctly, but also um, be able to maybe play with words for example um maybe the reason why i'm mentioning it mentioning mentioning it is uh, that um, uh, i write fiction myself and uh, um i've tried writing in english and i think in english i uh, can do it so i can write um, um well satisfactorily enough for me so I can write as well as in Russian I can almost as well maybe it is in Russian I can play with words I can uh, uh, render whatever I mean uh, I want to um, in writing uh, uh, in creating uh, my characters my dialogue so on so that's uh, what I'm talking about yes uh, so um, okay um, what about you Jana what's um, your point of view on this well i maybe i partially agree with you olga but not with all no, not on all of the points uh you i think that um there i'm not a perfectionist and so i, I and i don't believe in being able to know a language perfectly because a language is a is a fluid entity if you if we can say that language is an entity it's it's a, a fluid notion because language is something that changes every day something new happens all the time so it's it's like the to mountain top that you can never uh reach a hundred percent however um i do think that being fluent means being able to to speak easily and not on only on um topics you know like um you know like you, which you need at work or whatever uh but it's also something that you can be very very confident and yes you should uh, make i don't know 99.9 percent .9 of your speaking must be uh without mistakes you have to be very comfortable in your language you have to be able to speak or to um think in that language as well as speak uh, but i don't believe that you necessarily need to know grammar scope as well as a, a, if you're not a, a language professional i think that maybe you need to um you need to be able to, to you need to have this uh language intuition you have to be able to feel uh 
uh, you know, okay, this is what I should say and not that. Uh, you should be able to feel the difference between synonyms without necessarily being able to explain why you need it. But you can, you kind of develop this feeling. And so I don't, um, you know, I don't think that you need to be absolutely perfect, but you need to be very, very confident. And you need to, you need to let uh, natives think that maybe you are a native too, in, or you are near native too. So this is what, what I think fluency is, but it, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to involve always studying the language, unless you are a professional again. So Olga, do you have anything to add or shall we move on? Okay, uh, what about um, those people who position themselves as uh, uh, polyglots? Because I think uh, there are lots uh, of them nowadays and you can find lots of videos uh, on uh, YouTube and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so do you count them as uh, professionals? So do you um, have the same requirements for them, so to say? Uh, do you expect them uh, to um, know, for example, the grammar and so on? Uh, so yes, of course, if uh, somebody is learning this language for work, uh, it's one thing they can stop whenever, uh, at any point um, they uh, um, need, they feel comfortable at. Uh, so, but what about uh, those people who, um, as I say, who call themselves uh, polyglots, who say, I know this language and, uh, um, well, many other people um, listen to them, learn from them, uh, what do you think? Well, you see, I'm not, a, I don't consider myself a polyglot my, uh, and I, I'm, you know, I think polyglots are people who are uh, hobby people for whom languages are, it's a hobby and uh, they, I don't, think that there must be any kind of requirement so i know i, I think that uh, there, they can they should be if they uh, if they speak the language uh, fluently enough or even you know the or, or they understand the language well enough you could say i guess that they are they're good they they are you know um authentic, authentic uh, well polyglot. yeah some authentic they are they are certified polyglot right that's what yeah. i meant but i'm not one of those and uh, i don't strive to be one it's like you know uh polyglot um being a polyglot to me it's like collecting stamps or i don't know collecting something it, so I'm, I'm i don't i you know people collect languages just like they might collect stamps and so i'm i don't i don't collect uh, languages. okay so let me definitely disagree on this because <laughs> i think uh, there is a huge difference between a stamp and the language and uh, uh, when you position yourself as a polyglot you kind of accept uh, some responsibility for uh, what you say you can do for what you say you know especially nowadays as i said when there uh, there is this whole community which is uh, admiring you learning from you and so on so i think so just what i am trying to say here is uh, that um, nowadays language learning has become a real trend and yes many people do it have to do it for work but um, there are lots of others who have to do it as a hobby and um, we, we've kind of lowered the bar um for <laughs> this uh, fluency thing and uh, I kind of think that uh, it would be more challenging, more interesting, maybe more fair um, to ourselves and to others to uh, raise this bar and uh, try to, uh, if we, well, if we want to consider ourselves uh, um, polyglots or if we want to say, I know this language, well, we should at least uh, really know it up mm. to some point, yes? so. I think uh, B2 is definitely not knowing this language. So no, that's of course, yes, maybe. I agree. But Olga, what okay. languages can you say that you are fluent in or you are close to fluency in? Right. <laughs> After this statement, I yes, made, yes uh, <laughs> you are really going. <laughs> um, honestly, I just think I'm fluent in English. And uh, still, I know there are people whose English is. Uh, much better than mine like uh, I am remembering uh, um, some uh, uh, teachers some professors uh, we've had uh, we had at um, the university and uh, I know there is uh, still there is difference between my language my level and their level so uh, well 
then I uh, always have uh, this example in mind. I think of Nabokov and uh, oh, you know yes. the writer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, of course, uh, it was a bit different. So he was bilingual, and but uh, so he lived in both countries, right? He was in the language environment, but still, when I look at uh, his command of Russian and English, it's really. <laughs> oh, nobody so can. I think that <laughs> that gives you the idea of fluency. And uh, after this, uh, it's really embarrassing to say that uh, I'm fluent in a language when uh, <laughs> I'm so far from that. Yes. So, but okay, I think I can um, safely enough say that I am fluent in English. And uh, if I have uh, flaws, uh, they are minor. And I think uh, I can accept that. Besides, I've been teaching English for over ten years. To many many people and uh, this experience uh, has uh, allowed me to get into so many minor things because uh, you never know what a student is going to ask you and um, as a well I think as a, a good tutor should do I always try to really find the answer so whenever I don't know something I research I look into dictionaries and uh, this is how I keep learning I think even now Mm -hmm. um, as for other languages, so my second language would be French, and um, I think I'm somewhere at C2, but oh, C1, sorry, but um, C1, I don't know, maybe I'm getting to C2, but I'm not talking about fluency in this language, though um, when I write, I almost don't have, a, so I've been taking uh, um, a course, I took a course uh, not so long ago at um, uh, British University online and uh, I was doing some writing the um, professor was uh, correcting my writing so I saw um, how few mistakes I had still I think um, this is not good enough for me this is not good enough and uh, um, other languages uh, so my Spanish and uh, Italian are somewhere around B2 B1 um, and I am still planning to improve them. So hopefully um, in uh, a couple of years, maybe I will be able to see that I'm fluent in a number of languages, but for now I'm just counting English. Uh, what about you? Uh, sorry, before I answer the question, I want to, because later I'll forget, I want to interject about the writing thing. The problem with writing is that not everybody uh, is good at writing in general. I can and actually answering your question, I can say that I think that I am fluent. Uh, I have a fairly good command of English, but not like Nabokov. But no, nobody natives can't don't can't use English the way Nabokov used it, and I think they <laughs> themselves often acknowledge it. And anyway, uh, but I think I'm fairly fluent in English. I can speak freely on well, I think on um, any subject in which I'm co I, I'm competent and. Um, I, I know how to work with information uh, the same way I, as I would work uh, with it in Russian, but I don't know that I'm good at writing in English. I mean, of course, I could write some, some essay for an exam or whatever, but you see, I'm not very good at writing. I'm not a writing person in Russian. And so my writing in my own language isn't especially great. And so I think that this is a slightly different skill. But if you if you analyze my writing from the language, like grammar vocabulary viewpoint, I think that would be fine. But if you talk about um, style, plot, story, all that, all the elements of a uh, of a story or a fiction writing or of whatever, that would be not that would not be my my stuff, you know, sure sure so that's not what i mean but i just mean that when you are um when you know a language right or when you are learning the language you should include all the four elements because yes. really i think there are even people all the four aspects sorry mm -hmm. so there are people who say i know the language and they don't even know so they can speak it but they cannot write it they cannot really spell so i think that's a shame <laughs> i guess maybe yes but so i'm pretty good i think at uh English, um, French, I am, oh, I'm very far from fluency. I'm somewhere between, I would say, B1, maybe closer to B2, I want to think uh, that, but uh, I'm definitely not fluent. And German, well, I'm, like I said in my, in my previous video, I'm working on B2 level, but, effect, but in fact, I th I'm somewhere in B1, I would, I, I would say, so it's very far from fluency, but um, uh, I guess, um, you know, what uh, leads, uh, you, you know, Olga, your question has led to my asking you the next question. Is it necessary to 
strive for fluency for everybody? Is it something that everyone must uh, absolutely get to? Or um, can we get by without it? If we're yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, we can buy, uh, we can get by without it. And uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but I kind of think uh, it's a pity we don't strive for fluency. So, of course, I cannot say this. Um, um, everybody should strive for fluency. Um, I don't have uh, the right to say mm -hmm. this. Um, and I think it's just one thing. If you need your language for work, for traveling, it's fine. But uh, it's very important. Uh, how you position yourself, how you represent yourself with this language afterwards, because if you are at uh, an upper intermediate level, um, well, maybe you should be more careful with um, saying, I know this language uh, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Uh, so, And I guess if you are learning the language just for the sake of a language, like uh, I'm assuming Olga, like you do, you are learning language because you love the language, right? Is that correct? Right, sure. So if you if you are learning a language because you love the language, not you know you don't if you don't have some external circumstance which is pushing you to learn it, then I think maybe it would be fair to the language that you're learning that you try to, uh, you know, to achieve uh, fluency because so, because this is how maybe you express your love for this language because you want to right. know it, you want to feel it, you want to be in the skin, in the new skin when you are talking uh, in that language. And uh, so I think, but of course, if you are learning just for pleasure, for fun, and like Olga said, for work, I think you should just enjoy it and not like me and not worry about um, being fluent or being not so fluent. Uh, I mean, do what you feel that you need to do. And, you know, if again, if you, you will definitely enjoy it when you when you get to, to the heights, uh, you will feel, you know, you will feel like you're discovering, like you're unraveling some big secret that no one else knows. So I think. Right. So be... I think uh, it's a. Uh often a big temptation to switch the languages because uh, the um, um, earlier levels, um, lower levels, they are much easier and they are the levels where you have uh, definite fun learning the language. So after you've uh, um, completed them and you've come to the notorious intermediate plateau where you get stuck and uh, your motivation decreases, it's like almost um, impossible to resist this wish to now try a new language, especially mm -hmm. it's really, uh, since it's really interesting to see how a different language works and uh, uh, you feel better when you are learning one more language you added to your, as Jana said, stamp collection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think, um, so yes, of course, if it's your hobby, it's fine to do it, but you should just acknowledge it to yourself and to others that it's just a hobby and uh, I'm just, you know, flipping through these languages to see um, how they work, nothing else. Um, but also, I think um, there is, yes, as you say, you know, this hidden pleasure, this hidden treasure, at the higher levels, and maybe many people uh, deny themselves this discovery, this wonderful discovery, because uh, there is an obstacle before it and uh, sometimes it's scary to try to overcome and sometimes it's uh, really hard work but uh, i just want to encourage people especially those who feel passionate uh, about language learning uh, to um, try to get there because it's really great once you're there so yes it's like um, climbing a very high mountain i i don't have this uh, experience personally but i kind of can relate to it i think when you are on the top it's um, a different world and uh, it's just wonderful so Yes. don't give up hope uh, good luck. Don't yes give don't up. give up good luck yeah. well anyway we are um delighted to, to share with you our thoughts but we definitely want to hear from you tell us in the comments uh, or anywhere you want on facebook maybe wherever what fluency is for you uh, and what you know maybe you can answer our questions to yourselves are, are you fluent in any languages and do you feel that you need to be fluent in any of them so share with us what you think Yes, thanks for watching this video. Um, subscribe Remember? to our channel. Yes. Right. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye.